Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this practical quickly of how we can do determine the calorific content of fuel. So you're going to need a Bunsen burner set up just for the fact you're going to need to ignite the food to get it started burning. You're going to need your test tube, a boiling tube in fact. The boiling tubes are larger and they're more resistant to heat, so that's why we use boiling tubes. And we have uh, some just some water, 20 milliliters of water measured with a measuring cylinder. Okay, so we're just going to take the water and put it into our into our test tube. And we've got a long thermometer here. Don't take the short ones because the short ones will be too short. Take one of these long thermometers, and then we're ready to go. So we're going to test two different crisps: a high fat Pringles crisp and a low fat crisp. Now, one of the problems is if I take these two crisps. What an obvious problem that makes this not really a fair test to have different these two size. different crisps. Different what size. do you think? Different size. Different size, that means different... Weight. Mass. Mass. Yeah. Mass. Yeah. Mass. Like different different temperature. Different, you said, take, wait, wait, you said different mass. So they've got different masses. So what we need to do to start off with is we need to weigh our crisp before the experiment. We need to weigh the crisp before the experiment to find its mass. Okay? And then once we've weighed the experiment to find its mass, we then are ready for the experiment to go. We put 20 milliliters of water in here. So our independent variable, the variable we're changing, what would that be? What's the, what's the variable we're changing? The type of crisp. Yeah. Our dependent variable is going to be what about the water? Okay, what about the water? The temperature. But is it just the temperature or what do we need to know? If it's gonna if it's gonna go wait, wait, if it's gonna go up, yeah. Energy transferred. You're right, but it's gonna go up. So what two things about the temperature do we need to know? The starting temperature and the finishing Excellent. We need to know the start temperature and the finish temperature. Okay. And then the things what things have we I kept the same in this experiment? I'm trying to keep exactly the same. Okay, so give me one thing I'm trying to keep the same. Yeah, amount's a bad word. What, what word should we use? Volume of water. So the volume of water is going to be kept the same. And also, we're going to use the same starting temperature. That means after you've done the experiment once, you've got to take the test tube out, put the test tube in the washing up rack, and then replace the test tube with a new test tube with new water so it's back to the same starting temperature. Okay. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to ignite it. And you only need to hold it over the Bunsen burner. Of course, we don't need to put it on blue flame for this. You do need to wear goggles. But we're just going to put it over this long enough to light it. And as soon as it's lit, I'm going to hold it under the, under the uh, test tube. But the problem is, is what other controlled variable have I got here? What other controlled this variable? Between yeah. the test tube and the crisp. If I hold it really close, it's going to get more energy. If you hold it too far, it's going to get less. So I'm going to try and keep the distance the same. When you're burning it, try and do it so the tube is over the heat proof mat, just so that any bits of burnt crisp fall away. And you'll basically do this until the crisp has completely burnt itself out. So I'm ready to go. I've got my water. Take the starting temperature. So I'm going to look at eye level, and the temperature is 22. So make sure you get down to eye level to measure the temperature. Put it into your table. Ignite the food. It's not ignited yet, so I'm going to put it back. It's got to be burning on its own. There, it's burning on its own. Now, the important thing of this is turn it so the flames are going up the crisp. I'm holding it about five centimeters. Keep turning it so the flames are going up the crisp. OK? What's the test tube? Alright, that's glass isn't flammable, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, so you keep burning it until it's gone out, but keep rotating it so the flames are going up. Being careful not to get your hands too close. Okay. And it will It's all black things. Is that something? Excellent. It will keep going until it's burnt out completely. Yeah, it's burnt to a crisp. Uh and now give it a little while because energy is still being transferred from the tube into the water. So give it a moment, look at the, at the uh, temperature, and when the temperature stops going up anymore, so if it keeps going up, wait, and wait for the point where it doesn't go up anymore. And when it doesn't go up anymore, then take your readings. So far it's still going up, it's about 41. Okay, then you're gonna do the experiment with the other crisp, but remember you've got to take the tube, You've got to put that tube in the uh, washing uh, rack. Don't worry about uh, washing up, okay? Don't put cold water on it because it could shatter the tube. And then get a new tube with fresh water that's at room temperature again. 
okay, to start the next experiment. Can we use the same thermometer? Yeah, the same thermometer is absolutely fine. Okay, brilliant. 